Welcome to an RPG in a Box Basics video tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create doors in RPG in a Box. So we're going to go through the three different ways of making a door. There's two for grid mode and one for free movement mode. Okay, so let's first of all take a look at uh, how a door is constructed. So the first thing you need to know about a door is it needs to be an object, not a tile. So when you place a floor or a wall down, typically there'll be a tile. Okay, so they'll be found in this section. When you create an object, you can either create a map or you can create an object or a character or a tile. You're going to want to create an object, okay, for your door. And then you'll call it something like door or door one or whatever you want to call it, okay? So for the purposes of the video, I've imported from the asset library the door, just one of the doors that's found in the asset library, and we'll use that, okay? So if we open this up in the voxel editor, let's see how the door is constructed. So this is the door, and it has two animations. It has an animation called close and an animation called open. So once you've created your open and close animations for your door, you're now ready to use it as a door, okay? So let's go over how to how to do that. So the first way is what you can do is you can select a piece of wall uh, in this case, and we'll just delete it to create a gap for our door. And then we're gonna click on our door object and we're gonna place it down on the map, like so, okay? Now at the moment, that's not going to function like a door. Placing it is not gonna by itself do anything. Okay, so we need to then turn it into a functioning door. So there's two ways to do this with grid mode. So this is a map that's currently in the grid movement system. So what you do is with the select tool enabled, or the edit tool, you're going to select the floor tile just in front of the door. You're going to then select by holding shift, you're going to click the floor tile behind the door. So these are the two tiles on either side of the door. And then you're going to hold shift again and you're going to click the door itself. So you need three things selected. The floor on the floor on one side of the door, the floor on the other side of the door, and then the door object itself, which will obviously be in the middle. We've got these three things selected. If I now right click, let's say on the door, it will bring up this context menu. And you'll see that towards the bottom, we have a create door option, which we can click. Okay, be mindful that it is possible to select too many tiles and then it will mean that you can't select this, okay? So for the most part, what you'll do is you'll have two tiles and then the door will usually be in the middle, okay? So usually you just select the, the floor tile in front, the floor tile behind, and then the door itself, okay? So if your setup is slightly different to that, you still might be able to get away with um, selecting more than three tiles, but just be mindful that if you do select them and then you right click and this is not available, it's probably because you've got too many tiles selected. Three is the, the sort of the minimum. So if we were to just select the one in front and the door, right click, that option is not there. You need a door, you need a tile on the other side at the very least to link, because you're basically going to link these two tiles together with the door in the middle. Okay, so you need to select the door, tile, the floor tile in front, the floor tile behind, and then the door itself. Okay, so in this case, we'll right click and we'll click create door. And that basically does everything for you. Now, what's it done behind the scenes? Well, you'll notice first of all that the line in between the two tiles is drawn an orange interact only line. Now, if you refer to my previous basics video where I talked about the navigation, you'll know what this orange line means because we talked about all the different lines and what they mean. So it's created one of those lines in between the door. So it means that currently the player is not gonna be able to walk uh, along this path, but they can interact with the door. Why? Because it's closed, right? Now you'll also notice that when we created the door, it also put this scroll icon above the door. What does that mean? It means that the object now has a script attached to it. So you'll know when something has a script assigned to it because it will have this scroll icon above the head. For example, if we were to put a script on this goblin, let's just quickly um, click on the goblin and go down to the scripts section. Uh, where's that? Here we go. 
when I say when player interacts, run a script, and then let's just put the initialization script, you'll see that a script scroll icon appears above the head. That means that um, they've got a script assigned to them. Now you'll notice there's a slight difference between the scroll here and the scroll on the goblin. The scroll on the door has a sort of like a yellow, what looks like a lightning bolt icon in the middle of the script, in the middle of the scroll. Whereas the one on the goblin doesn't have a lightning bolt. What does that mean? It means that the door has what's called a quick script assigned to it, whereas the goblin has a script file assigned to it. So if we take a look at the door and open up the scripts section, you can see that it has a trigger event, which is the character interact. So this is when this script sh should run. So we want this script to run when the character clicks on the door. So when the player interacts with the door, when they click on it, it should then run a script. Now, in this case, it's running what's called a quick script, but you could also choose an actual file. Now, when you go to the script editor, you'll make script files. So you'll, you know, for example, our initialization script that we made in the very first video or in the second video, sorry, we were talking about player starts. Um, this is a file that we made and we made it in the uh, visual script editor. We talked about, you know, making a script and using the visual script editor. And this then gets saved as a script file. So you can then assign it to something. Whereas the quick script is a script that's actually written at the time into this box of in the uh, properties of the door in this case. Okay. So this is what's called a quick script because it's mean, it means it's not actually saved as a separate file. It's actually stored directly in the object itself. Okay. So it's just a quicker way of writing um, a script. But it's important to note that this script doesn't exist anywhere else. So you can't reuse this script on another object without copying and pasting it manually. Whereas if we made it a file, we could have the same script assigned to multiple things quite easily. Okay. But nonetheless, what Create Door has done is it's created an initial interaction line in, uh, in between the two tiles and it's a assigned an automatic quick script to the door. Now, we're not going to go too heavy into scripting, but I'll just quickly explain what this script does. So what it does is um, it sets which tile the door is on and then it grabs... Um, I'm not sure which tile that is. It's either the tile in front or the tile behind. Um, and then it's checking if the door is closed and if it is then it plays the animation open self is a reference to the door because this script is on the door so self is something that always changes depending on what the script is assigned to so self isn't always the door it's just in this case it's the door because this script is on the door so self therefore is the door so it's just a shorthand way of referencing the door so in this case, play animation for the door, open, and then it's going to modify the navigation between the door tile and the tile um, either that we're on or in front, I'm not sure which one it is, to walk and interact. So that's going to change the yellow, uh, orange line, sorry, to the green one once it's open. So you can then walk through. And then if it's not closed, if it's open, then it will play close and then it will change the navigation to... Um, interact only. So we'll put it back to being an orange line again, like it is now. And it will also change the property as well. So the door, the door can keep track of whether it's open or closed, depending on when you clicked on it, if that makes sense. So it's also worth pointing out that it's also created on the door as part of the create door function. It's created a custom property. So if we open this down, we can see it's created this state property, which is a um, string. And by default, the value is closed because that's how it starts. But when you open it, it will get changed to open. So the game can keep track of the fact that the door is open. And that's what the condition is checking. It's checking if this is closed, then open it. If it's open, then close it. Does that make sense? So that's how to create a door really easily. But obviously you can do it manually as well. You can just go through those steps yourself. So just to rewind that, if we were to do this manually, we'd have our gap. You'd create your, you'd place down your door object that's got your animations on. 
Now it's important to note that for the create door mechanic, it's going to assume that you're using the names open and close. But of course you can call them whatever you want. You could call this swing open, swing close or something like that. But if you do that, then the create door mechanic is going to struggle because it's going to be looking for these names, but you've called them something else. So that there, there might be instances where you can't use the create door um, shortcut because you're you're using your own names for things, right? So I'll just quickly show you how to do it manually. So you place your object down, you then um, change the lines in between. So we'll put these to interact only. Oops, not that way. Another way to do it is to just select the two tiles, right click and do navigation, interact only. So we'll change those to interact only. And then we'll select the door. We'll quickly create a property called state. Again, you could call it whatever you want. We'll start closed. And then we'll go up to scripts and we'll do a quick script. We'll click the pencil. We don't need to display a message. So we'll delete that. And then you need to think about what it is you want your door to do. So what we want to do is we want it to check. So we need an evaluate condition and we need it to check the door's property. This one uh, further down, the state. So if self, because self is a reference to the door, dot property, state, oops, helps if you type correctly. If property state is equal to closed, and that should be in speech marks because it's a string. Then what we wanted to do is to play animation self. And then this is where you would put your custom name. So swing open or something like that. Whatever you've called your open animation. In this case, we'll use open. And then we want to replace. In this case, we'll use replace navigation because it actually makes more sense to do that. Replace navigation. And we're going to replace the uh, navigation around self. So it's going to change everything that's linked to self. We want to change interact only to walk and interact. Okay, and then we want to set self.state uh, sorry, self property state should now be open. Okay, and then we need to do an else. What happens if it's um, not closed, if it's open? We can just copy this. Let's do it this way. Copy both of those, paste, but we want to play. Again, you'd have your swing closed or whatever, we'll call it close. And then we're going to do the opposite. We're going to replace the navigation around the door, which is self, to um, walk and change it from walk and interact and put it back to interact only. And then self dot property state should then be closed again. Okay, so there's your, there's how to write a doors quick script yourself. Okay, so we've basically uh, just recreated what the create door process does. So the, the advantage of create door using the, the shift clicking the tiles and right clicking and clicking create door is it does all of this for you. Okay, so if you don't want to keep doing this every single time and you're not going to be, and you're going to always be using the, the animation names of open and close, then you can just use the create door function, right? But now you know what it's doing as well. If you need to, you know, change the names of your animations or, you know, you want custom names or whatever. Also, if you want to sort of write your own scripts, you know, you want other things to happen, like, you know, door checks if it's locked and even if you've got the key, then obviously you're going to have to write your own custom scripts for that. Okay. So but we'll validate that make sure that's valid uh, code and then click OK. And now we're back at the exact situation where we were beforehand when we clicked create door, but we've just done it ourselves. Okay. So let's just quickly test this, make sure everything's working. So here we are in game. So if we uh, bring down the console and I'll just turn on the navigation so we can see what's going on in game. So we click the door, 
You can see it opens and then the, the line changes to green so we can walk through, walk back through. And then if we close the door again, it closes the door, but also changes the lines. Okay. Now you'll notice that in this case, it's also changing these lines. So, you know, you might want to do it the way that the create door does it. So, um, create door, if you use the create door option, it won't actually change these lines. It will just change the one in between the door and the, um, the other tile behind you know, this one here. But um, anyway, I just wanted to show you how you can create the door manually yourself. You could tweak the code so it works, you know, differently to how we've written it. But now we're going to talk about free movement. What if you're using a free movement game? Because none of that's going to work if you're using free movement. Okay. You're going to have issues with the door, with collision. You're going to be walking through the door and things like that. Or you're not going to be able to walk through the door. One of those two things. You're either not going to be able to walk through it when it's open or you can walk through it when it's closed. Right. There's... There's just problems that come when you try to use this system with free movement. Okay, so we'll change the map over to free movement and let's try playing our game again. So now we're in free movement. We're not even using those green and orange lines. So let's try walking through this door and you see how I can just walk through it. The reason I got stuck is the goblin is currently standing in, in the doorway. So let's wait for him to move. There we go. So see how I can just walk through it like it's nothing. Wait for the goblin to walk away again. If I open the door, yeah, I can still walk through, but the problem was I could walk through it anyway. Okay, so clearly the door isn't working in free movement properly. So how do you make a free movement door? So again, let's delete the door. Uh, let's delete the line. Put a green line back just for the moment. We're not going to obviously need the lines, but we'll put it there anyway. So what you can do is you're going to place your object down like you normally would. So again, you'll need to have um, the door set up as an object. And you'll need to obviously have um, open and close animations. Now, again, for this to work, you are actually going to have to use these names if you're going to make a free movement door. That's really important to know. In order for this to work, you need to use these names here, close and open. Okay, you can't change them. You can't have swing open. You can't have anything other than close and open. Okay. That being said, there is a way to make it work with custom animation names, but you just have to add a few extra settings. So once I've demonstrated how the how to set up a free movement door just generally, I will then explain how you customize it a bit so you can set up your own names and things like that. So once you've got your door set up like this, you're going to go to the map editor and you're going to place the object down like you normally would. OK, but now what you're going to do is you're going to select it. And in the settings of the door, there will be a section called thingies. Expand that down and there'll be one called door. Turn that on. And it says, please note that the door mechanic is already supported in free movement. So you can't use it in grid. OK, there is plans for it to come to grid at some point, but it's not in there at the moment. OK, so you click OK on that and then it basically creates the door and it also gives us these options. So first of all, when is the door triggered? By default, when you click on it but you could change it to when you walk into it. So character collides. So doors are open when you bump into them. You could do that if you wanted to, okay? We'll leave it as when you interact with it. Then you've got a section for assigning a sound to it. So you could go to the uh, sound effects generator and let's create an explosion sound, okay? And we will save that sound as door, okay? And then you can go to the open close sound and set that as this open close sound. Then you've got a requires item um, option, which allows you to specify if there's a key required or not. So this is something that's nice, that's built into the door uh, thingies uh, option that isn't built into the create door by default. You can still have a door require a key for grid mode, but you just have to do that yourself. You have to sort of manually edit the script to check for if you've got an item in your inventory or not. But this will do this for you as part of the uh, new implemented thingy system, which is, as I say, it will eventually be brought around to grid at some point. But for free movement, you can make use of the fact that you can set whether doors uh, require a key or not in this section here. So you would go to the item editor and you'd create an item. Let's just call it key, right, and save it. We won't bother setting anything else up, but just to give you an idea, we've created an item called key. You'd obviously need to set it all up properly down here. 
But then once it's set up, you would go back to your door in the map editor. And then here you would have your key. And then you can say that um, you, when you open the door, it consumes the item. So if that's ticked, then the key will disappear. It will be removed from your inventory. So it's like uh, one time use only. If that's unticked, it will remain in your inventory. Okay. And then you've got a locked script, and this will be a script that you can write that when it's locked, you know, it maybe displays a message that says, you know, you need a key to open this door or, you know, whatever it is you want to have happen while the door is locked. Okay. In this case, we're not going to use a key. We're just going to say, you know, the door is, a, it's just a door, right? So we'll delete the key, go back to the map editor, save it. But you'll notice that what's missing from um, the free movement approach is anything to do with scripting the door. Like it doesn't have a script icon over it. There's no quick script on interacts or anything like that. If we go to quick script, it's blank apart from the usual default, which is display message hello, but it wasn't using a script, right? So where does the script get placed? Where does it deal with things like the open animation and the close animation? Well, that's built in. That's why I say you can't edit that stuff. So you have to use the names it's looking for, which is why in free movement, you have to use the names open and close because there's no way to edit the script that, that the door is now effect effectively using to uh, manage the opening and closing of the door. You know, you can't even edit the properties. I don't believe it hasn't created any properties. So all of this stuff is kind of done automatically for you, but also behind the scenes. So that may change over time, but right now, um, those sort of things are sort of created for you, but in order to make use of it, you have to, to use the inbuilt terminology. So things like open and close as the animation name for the door. Okay. But now if we go into the game, oh, it's also important to note as well. One other thing to, that's important to check is in the settings for your door, make sure that passable is off. Okay. That's also important. Okay. Because now what's going to happen in free movement is it's going to use the collision of the door. So we want to make sure that it's not passable. Okay. So if we quick play now, and let's just make sure everything is saved. So here we are in free movement again. I can move around wherever I want to go. If I try and move through the door, I'm now stuck because the door is closed. And then if I press the E key to interact, you can see it says E interact down here. If I press that, the door opens with our sound effect. And then when it's open, I can walk through it, close it. I now can't walk through it, open it, walk through it and close it. So that's how to make a free movement door using the thingy system. Now let's talk about how to, if you, if you have got custom animation names, how you can actually still use those even with the uh, door thingy system. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the door model and we'll just change our animation name. So this is close. So let's make this um, swing close and open will rename swing open. Okay. So we've renamed our two animations. So they no longer conform to the automatic system that the door thingy mechanic will use. So here we are in the game. So if I move up to the door, I currently can't go into it, so the collision is working. If I press the E key, you hear the door sound play, and I can now walk through the door. This collision has been changed to reflect the fact that the door should now be open, but the animation didn't play. And if I close the door, you get the sound again, the collision comes back, but the, ad the animations are not playing because the door system is looking for animations with the name open and close. So once you've set up the door exactly like we've done it at the moment, so you've gone to the thingy section, you've turned the door on, you've given it a sound, if you need one, a key if it needs one, etc, etc, etc. What you're then going to do is you're going to scroll down to the properties section for the door and we're going to kind of repeat what we did with grid mode where we're going to add a custom property. We'll call it state and it will start default closed because the door starts closed. And then what we'll do is we'll scroll up to where the script section is and we'll create a quick script for when character interacts. Click the pencil icon and we'll do a simple check. If self, which will be a reference to the door, 
dot property state is equal to closed, then let's do an else end. So there's our condition. If it is closed, then we want to play animation self swing open and then set our property to open and then we'll copy this down to here we want to play swing close if it's already open and when it's finished closing set the property back to closed and validate okay so what this script does now is it just makes sure that those animation names that we changed also play when you interact with the door so these two uh sort of systems are going to work together but separately you know so this door is going to do its own mechanics but we're also adding on to the fact that um when you interact with the script when you sorry interact with the door it should also do this script as well which it's going to check this state and um if it's one state then it plays one animation and if it's another state then it plays another so here we are back in game so now if i go up to the door even though it's using custom names if i press the e key it still opens and we can go through the door close the door closes and the collision comes back so the collision and the sound are all coming from the door thingy system but the actual animation is coming from the script that we made and put on the interacts script event so it's just making sure that the door animation does play using our custom names alongside the collision and the sound playing that's coming from the door system does that make sense so that's how to if you are going to use custom names you can still use them but you've just got to then add an extra script to your door when you interact with it to play those animations um, and also track which state it's in so it plays the right animations to match what the collision is going to be set as, if that makes sense. So now we have a fully functioning door with custom names in free movement. So that will bring us to the end of this video on how to create doors in RPG in a box, the, the free ways of doing it, uh, the quick way of doing it in grid mode and the manual way of doing it in grid mode and then the way to make free movement doors using the thingy system. So hopefully with all that set, you should be good to go with how to make your own doors.